So this wraps up the section in the book on metaprogramming and it kind of um, covers some of the concepts and, and shows uh, how you can put those concepts to practical use. So yeah, chapter 21, uh, we're gonna translate our code into um, other languages and we'll talk about why that may be useful. Um, specifically what a uh, domain specific language is that we'll be translating into. And then uh, hopefully uh, we'll go through a bit of a walkthrough and how to translate our code into one of those domain specific languages. Um, so, Maybe one of the motivators, like why would we want to translate in the first place? Um, for one, it's uh, it's easier to it can be easier to work iter iteratively. Um, so if you're say you want to create SQL code, um, you can do that using R and save the steps along the way um, versus having it run all at once. Um, that might make it easier to, deb to debug or um, if, if you do want to look at those steps in between. Um, you can wrap common operations in a function. Uh, so if you're using it multiple times, it can be um, that can be helpful for you. And then it might just be easier to read as well. Um, for example, keeping everything in one language, uh, it can be uh, easier to collaborate with others as well, especially if, if like they don't know, um, say like SQL or HTML, uh, it can be uh, a little easier that way. <clears throat> and so here's an example from uh, the DB plier um, vignette. Um, here we're we're taking some some pretty much uh, D plier code and uh just changing changing columns and uh so that's this is what the r looks like and then we can actually see what that would look like as sql um and if you go to that link it will take you to the vignette and uh explain some of the reasoning to behind uh db plier um translating to sql is a lot more difficult than other uh domain specific languages um just because there's so many idiosyncrasies for sql um and a lot of a lot more uh like edge cases and and other things you have to deal with. So um, we'll show that as an example, but uh, we won't get into actually translating that. Um, so I'll pause for uh, any questions or any any comments so far. Okay, um, so uh, just an overview of, of what a domain-specific language is. Uh, this is from Martin Fowler. Uh, there, there's actually a lot of domain-specific languages um, that I wasn't actually aware of. Um, the book goes into HTML and LaTeX. 
which is uh, used in the scientific and mathematic world a lot uh, in academ academia. Um, so, so compared to a general purpose language um, like Python, uh, DSLs are aimed at one specific problem. Uh, and then he goes on to list um, several examples like CSS, regular expressions, uh, SQL, and then a lot of others that I haven't heard of. Um, uh, what was interesting, not in here, but I've seen it elsewhere where some people refer to R as a domain specific language. Um, and I'm not sure if I'd agree with that. I, I think R has gone beyond its, you know, statistical um, uh, specific language. And it's, I feel like it's de definitely uh, more of a general purpose language now. Um, but I did think that was interesting that uh, some people referred to it as a domain specific language. Um, so an overview of uh, HTML, uh, it's a, uh, used in a lot of web pages. Um, uh, it's used to build, like help build shiny apps and, and uh, useful in our markdown as well. Um, this, that's what I'm uh, presenting with here. Um, an example of HTML, um, the uh, tags is, is one of its um, more important features um, and they're wrapped around, um, they're wrapped around these uh, special characters, the less than and greater than uh, characters. Um, so some of the more important uh, attributes are uh, headers, and then we can uh, like H1, uh, we can use uh, P for paragraph, B for uh, making bold text, and uh, we can use IMG for images. Um, One note is that each uh, start of an attribute has an end, but but some of them don't like image. So the image is all wrapped into one. Um, so since since those characters have special meanings in HTML, uh, HTML needs to use escapes if you want to uh, actually print those out or actually use uh, these uh, these signs instead of the um, special characters. So you need to use and GT and and LT if you want to use those. And the same goes for. Um, the and character as well. Okay. Um, so a lot of the a lot of the examples or or the example for HTML was a lot of code. So uh, I figured it would be easier to go through. Uh, work through this uh, uh, walkthrough of translating R to HTML um, in uh, in the R studio. Okay. Um, 
did either of you go through uh, this chapter beforehand? I I only made it through the HTML bit, um, but yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, I I I saw the LaTeX one as well, but um, I don't I don't use that, and I saw that it was even harder to understand than the HTML. Um, but I think going through this will will give us plenty of uh, opportunity to see what what this looks like. Yeah, for me, it's it's HTML uh, more difficult than LaTeX. LaTeX, yeah. Has, yeah. At least when when you know, uh, it's always the same. So you cannot do anything else. So they, there is a structure, even in HTML, maybe. Yeah, but um, sometimes these values, these escapes that you said. So why, when I need to put this, uh, this value, when not? So, like, require more uh, attention to me. But for for uh, like customizing text uh, very quickly for, for for a title or using colors for uh, text and that, that that would be my my uh, the, the way i use hml <laughs> yeah i i agree it's much more useful um i guess if you are if you do use LaTeX or or anything like that that might be useful um i guess if you ever have to use um I use specific it. mathematic equations that can be helpful yeah 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 i i i use it and it's basically a way to set up a, a, a page so when 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 the when you know uh how to do it so it's always the same it's not that it's you you need to uh it looks like a bit complicated but then there's always the same sign and uh, i use mainly for for mathematical simulation and uh, for setting up a page that is uh, like a table than than other uh, so maybe it stays like that when you set it up. It's very difficult to uh, change the format of the page without going inside the code and uh, the language. And uh, so it's quite useful. Uh, it can be a bit complicated, but once you know, uh, I think it's straightforward. But now with with our markdown or quarto, uh, basically you achieve the same result. And inside of LaTeX, uh, if you use mathematical formulation, so yeah, that's that's a good point about uh, markdown and quarto. Yeah, that's. Uh... It can be useful there for sure. Um, so hopefully you can see my screen. Um, we'll we'll walk through this a bit. Um, some of this was a, a bit more complicated for me, um, especially getting uh, towards the tag functions. Um, but I guess we'll uh, get through this together and. Uh, uh, hopefully this will be useful, uh, useful exercise. Um, so our goal is to, uh, we have this HTML here, um, uh, just some basic HTML with the body uh, header and some uh, text and an image. And we wanna generate that using, um, using the following R code. Um, and Hadley notes that 
uh, the nesting of the functions here matches uh, the nesting of the tags. Um, and unnamed arguments become content of the tag and named arguments become their attributes. And then the uh, special characters are automatically escaped. Um, so a bit goes into that and we'll see that here. Uh, so first of all, um, figuring out how to um, escape special characters, uh, that's that's pretty common for translating to other uh, languages, whether it's HTML or 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 whatever, uh, being able to escape those special characters is uh, the first uh, important uh, topic um, because otherwise the the new domain specific language is going to fail uh, if otherwise. Um, so given input, we want to automatically escape uh, these special characters. Um, and at the same time, we do, we need to make sure that those um, we generate are not double escaped. And so uh, Hadley's way of doing that is by creating oops, um, an S3 class. Um, Uh, advanced add add our HTML um, and this has been a while, but I I think this is the method. Uh, the print is a method for the class. Um, and it takes uh, it takes input and um, and it adds uh, the HTML tag to it. Um, so So if I put uh, print dot uh, advance our HTML hello cohort six uh, yeah it will add um, it will add the HTML tag um, what I wasn't so certain of is um, uh, it concatenates and um, uh, the the input and with the new line, and then it concatenates with a new line and a blank space. I'm not sure what was going on there. So I think the cat. I think the cat is just the cat out, like the printout to the console, um, and the rest. I guess is. I'm not sure. I, I'm not. I don't know the str wrap function, but, uh, like my crude understanding is like, let's say you have a vector of inputs, it's just going to have each element be its own new line, if I'm not mistaken. Um. How could I? How could I do that? Um. You just have like a vector vector of strings, like uh, let's say, uh, I think. Oh, uh, like, can I do this? Okay. Yeah, so that was, um, a vector of uh, state names. And so, yeah, it, it wraps it around for every 
every part of that vector. Okay, that's helpful. Oops. Okay, so we have that for uh, for creating the HTML, and then we have two parts um, for the escape. Um, one will take uh, any of these special characters um and and returns uh the html mm. version of it uh, and then th the next part uh just leaves it alone if there's not something like that so we'll add we'll add that and then uh test it out a little bit And uh, feel free to um, ask any questions. I'm not sure if I'll be able to answer them or, or add anything that I may have missed. Um, so soccer and football. OK, so yeah, it'll take the. Uh, special character and then convert it into um, something that HTML can read. What, what is the AMP uh, meaning? Of so that's like an, an HTML code for an ampersand. Uh, so it's a character that uh, um, that Trevin wrote in the, the line before. So that, that has a special, it's basically, it's the escape character in HTML, so you have to kind of uh, like make sure that the thing is not interpreted in the literal string is not interpreted as an escape character, but as kind of a um, a text character, if I could put it that way. Yeah, yeah. So this is what the HTML uh, reads or understands, and then. Um, and then th that will actually be the output um, when it's generated, that character will be. And then same for that, that like, that's what the HTML uh, understands is the and LT, and then uh, it will generate either the less than or greater than sign um, depending I'm going to go to this. Yeah, so so these are, I guess these are the more common ones. I'm not sure if there, there might be some other ones as well. Um, but yeah, those, those are the ones that we need to be wary of. Uh, one moment. I have some uh, very energetic dogs that uh, need to go out and they're they're uh, playing with dog toys now, and it's something. So they like uh, uh, the, the splash, the backsplash. Uh, when I uh, attempt to use um, like a character formula in LaTeX, so I use the backsplash. Then I need to I do beta to obtain the, the, the character beta. And here, instead of the, the splash, I use this amp. AMP or LT uh, beside the this this uh, inside. 
Okay. Yeah. yeah. I yeah, I think that's a similar similar concept as well. Um how it how the language translates it and then uh outputs it the special the special characters. Um so yeah, I showed some examples, or I, I guess I only showed one example. Um, but here are others where, um, where it escapes the those special characters, um, and then says double escaping is not a problem. Um, Oh, I guess I guess for this, yeah. Let me copy this. Oh, okay, so what what this is doing is then. Um, like it will that second escape function reads this in and then it just passes it on. Okay, instead of uh, breaking it or or whatever. Okay, so so yeah, that being able to escape is uh, one of the more important parts of being able to translate uh, translate code. Um, because HTML isn't the only language that needs or that has special characters that need escaped. Um, so that's definitely important. Um, the next part, um, or I guess the next three parts are dealing with tags and then how to convert that from R code into HTML. Uh, we're going to start off with um, the the p tag um uh html tags can have both attributes and children um and we need a way of separating these and so uh so for example we might have a, a function called p um that takes some text and then um uh bolds it as well uh, and converts it to um html so how how are we going to going to actually um build the code behind it to to translate it um and here it starts to get a little more complicated um but hopefully i can at least give a high level overview of of what's going on here. Um, so first of all, we create a function um, dots partition uh, that takes in dots um, and passes that on to uh, dots and list two. Um, I'm not completely sure uh, what this second line is doing here. Um, but what the overall code is doing is it's taking the names from dots and then um, whether or not uh, it's named or not, it will separate those two um, into different lists. And so we'll get, um, so if, if we, uh, if all our dots are entered here and I can go over to our studio again,
So if we give it a, a list and where some uh, values are named and some are not, uh, it will separate the two out. And yeah, since I didn't run this before. Uh, That's from Arlang. I don't think I have this installed on. Oh, maybe I do. Oops. There we go. And so, yeah, it will it will partition it out into uh, named A and B, and then uh, the unnamed values as well. Oops. But he, he, he it didn't advise about uh, the, the missing package. No. It didn't what? The, the Arlen package. Oh, I was able to, I was able to load it. Um, Yeah, I didn't have it loaded. Um, yeah, so this um, this is an important step for um, determining whether a tag has is is named or not, um, and then uh, like what we'll do with it. Um, Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm not sure if uh, there's any more to uh, this or not. Um, so I can I can go keep going on. Um, so the next the next part. Um, he says now we can create our p function now that we have uh, now that we have this s three class that can separate the named and unnamed portions. Uh, so Hadley created uh, a new function called HTML attributes, which is in uh, the source code that I had gotten from his GitHub. Um, so it's, he says it's a bit complicated, um, but, uh, it's, it's not that important. Um, so he just has it here. Um, I believe if I do this, that, oops, make sure I'm in the right one. I believe if I do this, that it will bring in that function. Um, DSL not found. You need to quote the name. Oh, thank you. All right, there we go. So that will bring in his function. And then here we have the actual code, uh, the P function. And so we've got our dots. Um, and then um, Oh, and then HTML attributes takes uh, the name dots and then uh, 
for the children, uh, we take uh, the unnamed dots and then um, escape any characters within the children. Um, and then here we um, paste all of the attributes and children into the correct uh, HTML format. And here I'll find out if I have HTML or not. Okay, it looks like I do. Should be from Per. There we go. All right, and then we can create our um, attributes using the p function. Uh, so there's um, some text, uh, ID equals Trevin. And then it can deal with uh, the, the named and unnamed attributes as well. Um, I think the next part was a was an expansion on uh, on p on the p function um, for other tags as well. Um, let's see. Yeah, it looks like it was kind of like a <clears throat> use of use of terminology, but kind of like a function factory where you basically just kind of pass the name of the tag and then it creates a function that'll generate that HTML tag. At least that's how I read it. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, this is this is confusing, or uh, this is confusing for me. Um, because I get, or I guess, what's the What's the input tag here? So it'd be a name, it'd be a tag tag name. So for example, like B for bold, uh, as it shows below, or um, you know, okay. H1 or something like that. Um, and then basically it, it, like this function creates a function um, to gen that in turn generates the desired tag. At least that's how oh. I understood it. Yeah, that, um... Yeah, that, okay, so it, it creates this function and then that will take, that will create the correct tag for uh, the HTML. Is that, is that correct? That's, at least that's what I understand, yeah. Okay. Um, what were the, or I guess what were the other tags that, so that would be for B. Um, I mean, maybe I guess you do like H1, for example, H2, some, something like that, and see, we can see if it generates that. OK. So I think okay. that would be, that, that would give you like a valid H1 tag. And I guess there are presumably attributes that you could have for the H1 tag. Um, I guess this would be the tags that have, um, yeah, um, yeah, presumably be the, the H1, H1 tag, I guess has attributes. I've, uh, <clears throat> I, guess, I guess it does like color and things like that. Oh, cool. Um, 
sorry. All right, yeah, that that um <clears throat> that makes a lot more sense. Um I I guess I was still wrapping my head around um <clears throat> function factories as well. Uh but yeah, this definitely brings it all together. <laughs> um Oh, uh, and then I guess now we can run uh, the earlier example where we use uh, uh, the P function and then we can use um, those tags as well. Or I, I, I think I see here. So I, I guess like in a sense, the section sort of recreates uh, like H, some parts of HTML tools, I, I guess, just to demonstrate how to translate. Oh, okay. So then this is, um, so that's like the, the function to generate a bold, a bold tag. Okay. The B would be the function that does that. Okay. Well, that, yeah, that makes it, um, like being able to, do a function factory or whatever makes like this line so much more succinct and like a lot easier. <laughs> I I think the last part of this is is just or oh, I was I was wrong. There's uh so I was gonna say taking a look at every other uh, tag as well, but we need to be able to um, handle void tags. Um, uh, so it's similar to tag, but it throws an error if there are any unnamed tags. Okay, so we'll throw an error if there are any uh, unnamed arguments. Um, yeah, so this looks, this looks similar to, uh, the tag function, except that, um, if there are unnamed arguments that so will throw that error. And it generates, uh, that function factory as well. And there we go. And so IMG then is the function that creates uh, the HTML for for image. And then those are all the named uh, arguments. Um, if I guess if we did tried that, then it would throw uh, it would throw us that error. Okay, and then um, yeah, I guess putting it all together. Um, uh, next, we need to generate these functions for every tag. Uh, we start with the list of uh, tags and void tags. Um, some have the same name as uh, the base R functions. So I'll run this. I'll see if I have map. Okay.
All right, this gives us an explicit but verbose way to create HTML. Um, yeah, so HTML. Okay, th then that that is all of our tags then. Okay. Then that will generate uh, that will generate our HTML, and then using using that we can finally create our final uh, final like four line uh, four line code to create our goal. Uh, our goal HTML. So yeah, that that kind of um, that kind of went through a lot of our uh, previous um, previous programming concepts that we went through in earlier chapters. Um, this was definitely uh, definitely harder, I'd say. Um, and I and the HTML uh, translation was is probably one of the more straightforward ones compared to say like uh, SQL or or maybe even um, uh, other languages as well. Um, but yeah, going through this, it, it does, uh, uh, it is quite something and it's like, um, pretty remarkable how, um, how even a few lines of code can, uh, can generate, uh, HTML from from R, that that's definitely a pretty cool concept and pretty powerful. I'm curious. Um, has have I have either of you seen any kind of maybe walkthroughs or introductions for how DB DB Plier works? Because I think that's kind of a, that might be an interesting, interesting case of of of, of translating. Um, yeah, where did my, where did my notes go? One second. Oops, sorry. I'm not sure if they get into it at all um, here or not in the uh, vignette. Um, yeah, here they they just sh they show why. Um, I'm not sure if they actually go through that or not. But yeah, that would be a that would be a good exercise <laughs> for sure. Yeah, just uh um jumping off of your your uh resource Trevin, I found that there's a there's a vignette on on function translation. I, I've not looked through it but Maybe kind of on the face of things, it looks promising as kind of another, oh, really? another another walkthrough. Uh, I just dropped the link in the in the, in the chat. Um, yeah, there you there you go. That one. Um, yeah, that might be worth 
worth looking at, I guess, for, for anyone interested in, in doing something in doing something like this too. Yeah. Yeah. I guess this would be a good like place to start. Um, Maybe another interesting one that I, I've, I, I just know exists, but haven't bothered to dive into, not least since I, I don't, I'm, I'm not a data.table user or well, I'm not a very proficient one, but there's a, a package DT, DT plier, which is sort of um, yeah. a package that allows you kind of to, you get functions that are, let's say in, deep plier syntax, if I can put it that way, um, uh, or like, or expressed in like the deep plier idiom, and then behind the scenes get translated and executed in, in data.table, which is, you know, more, more performant. Um, that might be another neat, neat example to look at if they, if they kind of walk through. Oh, cool. And there's actually a translation vignette here. So maybe there are a few other jumping, jumping off points for anyone interested in this. Right? Um, the other one I was thinking of um, was like Python and Reticulate as well. Um, I imagine that is a similar concept that they use um, in translating uh, the code between R and Python, um, and definitely, definitely not an, an easy, uh, translation. Um, but I think the end product is, uh, pretty fairly smooth, um, like for dictionaries and named list. Um, uh, so I think that might be like another example. Does that one, I'm curious, Trevin, does that one actually translate or does it just op, kind of pass pass data back and forth between two two environments, like the R environment and the, the Python environment? I've never used it before and I'm, oh, not, I, I'm yeah, not a Python that, user. Yeah, that's a fair that's a fair question. I'm not sure if I know the answer to that. Um yeah, that that might not be a just a simple translation. Um, yeah, I guess I don't. I guess I don't know. Um, are there any other? Uh, uh, questions or comments as we wrap up here. No. All right. It, it looks like uh, it, it looks like at least our next three are going to three meetings are going to be a little or possibly a little. Um, uh, easier chapters, um, and then the the final chapter of rewriting our code in uh, C plus plus will be uh, that should be an interesting one. Nice, yeah. but you know, we give an introduction. <laughs> um, that's okay. Thank you very much. So very interesting and so. Finally, I have an idea of what's happening inside the HTML uh, language. Okay, um, so let's have a look because I don't remember who is next. Uh, it looks like uh, Olo Femi is. Okay. Okay, Olo Femi, then me, then Trevin again. And then there is the the last, uh, as you said, the last uh, the last chapter that we'll see <laughs> what's going to happen. Okay, great. So thank you very much. And uh, if we have nothing else to to add, nope. Uh, 
Yeah, great. Okay, so we meet each other next week. All right. See you next Bye. week. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.